says that the guy should resign, uh, but for other reasons. You have a host of other reasons, right, Congressman? Explain. Well, well, we do, but what has come to light most frequently, I think if you took it in the light most favorable to Rod Rosenstein, he would have been joking about wearing a wire on the President of the United States. That is an inappropriate thing to do when you're leading the Justice Department. You don't make jokes about destabilizing the presidency in front of your colleagues and your subordinates. And in an administration where there seems to be a culture in some places to resist the president, resist the commander in chief, it seems as though th this is the type of contribution to that ecosystem that's very unhelpful. So it's my expectation that uh, if Rod Rosenstein uh, is not before the House Judiciary Committee to give testimony about what happened and the context, that we may force a vote on his impeachment. So if the president is saying, I want you to stay, Rod, and then you're working with your colleagues, including those in the House Freedom Caucus and elsewhere, I know you're not part of that caucus, but saying we, we, we kick the guy out, you guys aren't on the same page. Well, we have an obligation that is separate and distinct from the president's, Neil. Our job is not to work for the president. We work uh, within the Congress to conduct oversight on the Department of Justice. It's literally our job in the Judiciary Committee. So I wouldn't care if it was a Republican president, a Democrat, a president I liked or didn't like, if you have employees at the Justice Department making these kind of jokes, or maybe it was a joke to try to gauge people's reaction to see if it would lead to further conduct. We don't know, but I think it's really bad for the country to be addressing these questions in the absence of facts on the record under oath. And that's why Mark Meadows is meeting right now with Speaker Paul Ryan to see if we'll be able to secure a hearing for Mr. Rosenstein to give that sworn testimony before the Congress breaks for October. Right, we don't know what really happened and whether he really made these remarks, or whether they were in jest or in earnest, or whether they're taken out of context, nor do we know maybe how things have changed in the year or so since they were allegedly made. So, so much we don't know. But Congressman, I. I am curious to get your gauge on, let's say you get what you want, maybe be careful what you wish for, because now you have a guy who would turn into a witness for James Comey, uh, and, or certainly a Bob Mueller to go back to the, Mueller, uh, the Comey firing and everything else, and that could, you could create an even bigger mess for the president, right? I don't think it's about making a mess for the president. I think it's about transparency for the American people. Whether the information is good, bad, truthful, untruthful, I always think it's good for the country to have these things play out in open hearings rather than in rumors and leaks and innuendo, because then you really don't know what's going on. So I think that the American people are pretty smart. They can make a good judgment, but we've got to be able to have the facts together. And if Rosenstein offers testimony or information that's unflattering to the president, you're right. We've got to be able to deal with that. All right, real quickly, this concerns again um, the Judiciary Committee uh, on the Senate side urging, that is, the Democrats to postpone the hearing. As I told you, sir, many of the Democrats uh, think that it's, it's, it, it's just sort of a combination of charges here that the judges damage goods and should step aside. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's particularly disappointing that uh, Senator Hirono from Hawaii is actually fundraising off of this, making statements about the appointment and the advice and consent role of the Senate, and then using it to try to generate campaign contributions. That is not helpful to the process we're in. I also think, Neil, it's really dangerous if we simply say that the sum of allegations, the, the volume of allegations, is sufficient to not have to test the veracity or truthfulness or legitimacy of those allegations. We do not want to live in a country where the allegation and the conviction are synonymous. We've got to be able to test those claims, and I think that the Senate set up a fair procedure to do that, and I think that we'll be able to uh, gauge the credibility and then move forward with the nomination. All right. Uh, 